We're all attracted to people all the time. What is it that attracts us to others? And what do others find attractive about you? These are some of the questions our team is going to try and answer in this series of videos. With millions of people to choose from, finding that perfect someone shouldn't be that difficult. But the media, social pressures and human nature itself have turned it into a mystery. We're surrounded by manipulated images, celebrity and glossy perfection. We're given rules about dating through books, websites and the press. They all pressure us to conform to an ideal of what is attractive. But what's the truth? It's time for science to tackle the subject. Through a series of experiments, our team are going to piece together some of the clues to this enormously complex phenomenon. And in these videos, they will explore the science of attraction. We grow accustomed to the things we experience every day. They become reliable and comforting. Smell is a part of that. We all have smells that remind us of places and people, and in particular, our partners. But smell may also play a role in our initial attraction to a particular person. In this video, we're going to make 10 young people smell each other's stinky, sweaty clothes. That is disgusting. To find out how important smell is when it comes to attraction. How did you go wrong? <laughs> First, here's Cat. It's thought that our brains are hardwired to associate different scents with different feelings and emotions, so the smell of someone we care about should be imprinted firmly in our minds, firmly enough to identify it at least. That smell may actually play a part in the initial attraction we feel towards that person. Brits spend £640 million on perfumes, so clearly we care how we smell. Perfumes and colognes aside, do we have a genetic smell that others will be attracted to? To test out the impact smell has on relationships, we've recruited five young couples and are going to get them really stinky by taking them paintballing. Hosting the experiment will be Charlie, and he's going to explain to the guys exactly what's going to happen. Hi everyone, thanks for coming along to take part in our smell experiment. Now for this to work, we need to get you really stinky, so we're going to send you off for a spot of paintball. <laughs> Before we send you out into battle, we need to set some test conditions. On the table are some clean white t-shirts, and we need you to wear them under your kit. After the game, when the shirts are really starting to pong, we're going to mix them up and get you to have a good smell of each one. Sorry, but it is in the name of science. Then we'll ask you which smell you were most attracted to and which you think belong to your partner. Good luck and just have some fun. Once they collected their brand new t-shirts, we made sure the subjects were nice and clean, creating an olfactory blank canvas without any deodorants or perfumes on their bodies. We also provided the young lovers with brand new paintballing armour and outfits, never before worn. And the stage is set for a pongy paintball session. Hi, okay, ladies and gents, if you'd like to come and get your weapon from the rack. OK, everyone, make their guns hot. Three, two, one, game on! <laughs> We put them through a punishing hour-long paintball marathon, and with them trying to avoid paint pellets travelling up to speeds of 200 miles an hour, they were guaranteed to work up a good sweat. <laughs> oh, it's hectic, hectic, it's crazy. Boiling and sweaty, you don't want to know. I'm sweating like a pig, <laughs> which is probably not good for a girl, but... You lot told me it was going to be fun. I am hot, I stink, I don't do stinky, I'm a female. You know, I've got pride. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant, man. Great, great fitness and everything, man. You've got to be fit to do this. We separated the reeking T-shirts into two sets, one for the boys and one for the girls, gave them a number from one to five and hung them on two separate washing lines. We've told them to pick a t-shirt that they're most attracted to, 
and then choose a t-shirt that they think belongs to their partner. It's time for them to have a sniff. Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> smells quite nice. Oh, that one smells really different. Oh, this is so well hard. That one's meant to be a girl. Whoa. That one's still soaking. <laughs> Well, he's hitting the blokes ones. <laughs> <laughs> this is not smell too good. One and two, I feel sorry for you. Yarny, it's running too fresh. <laughs> Hoo -hoo. It's quite a healthy smell. They all smell of mud. That is disgusting. Oh. That's not as bad. <laughs> OK, so let's see the results. First, we'll start with which t-shirts they were most attracted to, and surprisingly, it's not always their partner's one. The t-shirt I was most attracted to was number one. I thought it was more or less a smell I'd like, want my girlfriend to smell like. The t-shirt I was most attracted to was number three. It smelled the nicest, the freshest, I think just the cleanest smell, really. I was attracted to t-shirt number three because I thought it smelled the freshest out of all of them. Uh, the T-shirt number I was attracted to was number five. Um, it actually smelled the nicest. My favourite T-shirt, That's it smelled the nicest. It was a nice money smell and it was number three. I was attracted to T-shirt number one because it just smelled sweet. It smelled like, it smelled like a lady, so... All right, OK. I was most attracted to T-shirt number three. Um, it smelled the most clean. <laughs> I chose uh, T-shirt number four for... Uh, for both the one I was attracted to and because I thought it was Amy's T-shirt. I, I kind of recognised the smell and I think the familiarity was why I found it attractive. Um, I chose T-shirt number five as the one I was most attracted to and the one that I thought was Alex because um, it didn't smell, of, didn't smell of a lot and I know that he doesn't sweat and um, it had a hint of his smell in it and I know his smell pretty well. Uh, I was most attracted to T-shirt number two. It didn't have any bad smells, it smelled quite nice. So I'm hoping it was a bit like Jodie's smell, so... Interestingly, very few of our test subjects chose their partner's T-shirt as the one they were most attracted to. When it came to the girl's choice of which T-shirt had the most attractive smell, there was one standout result, which Kat will now explain. Ross was chosen as having the most attractive smell by a whopping 80% of the girls. And he was just as sweaty as the others and didn't have any cologne on, so it was literally his natural smell that was coming through. He may have a particularly strong immune system, or it may have been more varied than the other guys. This could have been communicated via his smell, and that would make him more attractive. Now, let's take a look at which T-shirts they've picked when asked which one belonged to their partners. The T-shirt I thought was Rachel was number two because it's quite familiar to the others. I didn't really fancy them compared to that one. I think T-shirt number four belonged to Ross because whenever he goes and plays football and stuff like that, he never really smells of anything. It had a bit of a familiar smell, so... I think number four belonged to Jake because I just got a gut feeling when I smelt it, I could sort of smell him on it. The T-shirt I chose for Sean was the same one I felt most attracted to, which was number five. Yours is number one. <laughs> <laughs> I just know, I know it smelled too well and it was a little strong. <laughs> I love you, babe. <laughs> I'm still not even 100% sure myself. I'm going to go check it out because I'm still not sure about the results. Number four. Okay, I chose T-shirt number one as Pete's T-shirt. Um, it was the most wet and he'd been running around a lot, so I thought he might have got quite sweaty. And I did recognise his smell, although I don't think I could exactly describe it in words. I was attracted to T-shirt number four, um, I think. Well, because I think that was Amy's T-shirt and it was the most familiar smell. I chose number five as the one I was most attracted to and the one that I thought was Alex because it's quite hard to describe Alex's smell, but um, I don't really know, it was just just smell of him. I picked number three as being Jodie's. It just had a, a stronger scent of Jodie on it. It was just like a, a gut feeling, so... Let's take a closer look at the results. The boys were only able to identify their girlfriends 20% of the time. However, the girls did much better than the boys identifying their partners with an accuracy of almost 70%. 
Evidence suggests that women have a much more acute sense of smell, especially when ovulating. Also, girls wear more perfume or scents than boys, so the lads won't have been exposed to their partner's scent as much. Yeah! <laughs> I knew it was right. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you <laughs> You don't know me! <laughs> How many have you got wrong? <laughs> Good, good. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Are you serious? <laughs> nah, that's wrong. I was right. <laughs> Some of the genes that are involved in making our immune system work also control aspects of our body odour. So to some extent, our scent gives away the genetic makeup of our immune system. If a person's makeup is too similar to our own, then that person will smell less attractive to us. However, the odour of someone whose immune system makeup is different will seem more appealing. The combination of different genetics will give any offspring a stronger immune system. To find out more and test out our chat-up line generator, go to scienceofattraction.co.uk.